I happened just to be the three days in Moscow, and I arrived in Moscow knowing that the coup against Gorbachev had, had happened. And then the coup, and, and I said to Mikhail Gorbachev, so I was in favor of you already in 91, because I defended you, you should stay as president of the Soviet Union, and not the old uh, people uh, could should come back. And then, it was a Wednesday, the coup collapsed, and I was in the flight back to Frankfurt, and, and the, the pilot said, now the, the coup has failed, and the people applauded. And two days later, two days later on Friday, they took this monument of Dzerzhinsky. There is this prison in Lubyanka, called Lubyanka in Moscow. Many people were killed there. And the Monday when I arrived in Moscow, the 19th of August, Dzerzhinsky was standing as a great statue on, uh, on, a, on a column. And on Friday that week, they took him down from, uh, from, from, from this monument. And now they renamed uh, a division of the Ministry of the Interior uh, after Felix Dzerzhinsky. And I think this is a dangerous development because in Russia, this is my impression at least, they don't come to terms with their communist past. And, and they passed already a law that if somebody speaks badly about uh, the history of Russia, you even can be punished. And I think this is very necessary and uh, concerns our values, Julian, and uh, dear friends here, our values, that, that we know what our values are, and that uh, we realize what has happened in the past to build a better future. My experience in the European Parliament, being a sinner in a political sense, it always goes around, and nobody should say I am. I am a person without any uh, any deficits. We all have our deficits, but some have more. And countries having had for more than 50 years a common totalitarian communist uh, uh, government, of course, have it much more difficult uh, to to reform and and to go into the right way as countries which are. Uh, for such a long time already in democracy. So I encourage the new president, your prime minister, your government, uh, the Senate, the parliament to continue to build up a real legal order and that all uh, citizens of Romania are equal. This is my wish, this is my advice for your country. The European Union should deal more with big questions and not with all details. So this is the general the feeling and the, the part, the, the, the main parties, the EPP, European People's Party, let's say Christian Democrats, Social Democrats, Socialists, uh, Liberals, and Greens, the Greens are normally pro Europeans as well. I would regard those parties as pro Europeans. They have a responsibility to understand the questions of the people and to give an answer to the people. I think it's very vital that the European parties don't follow in their thinking the arguments of the Eurosceptic parties. Because this I see partly in the United Kingdom, in Britain, that the Conservatives try to be a little bit like UKIP. But if you try to be a little bit like UKIP, then the people will vote for the original, for UKIP, and not for the, uh, for, for the copy. Exactly, that, that is right, for the, for the copy. And so I think what is necessary to speak to the people. Do we want as Europeans to live like in the US? It's a good question. In the last 60, 70 years, Europeans usually answer no. We wanted a different social environment. Less competitive, more reassuring. This is an option of a society. On the other side of the Atlantic, the option was somehow the opposite. They're not black and white, obviously. They're both great, but they're different. And I think it's, good, it's a good thing to have those two different systems working together in order to improve each other. As, as much as I um, <clears throat> um, strongly dislike <laughs> UKIP and the values, um, do you not think that it's an important um, that their presence is somehow important in? in politics, in European politics, as much as it is damaging, in the same way that um, in the Scottish referendum, I personally feel that the, the outcome was correct, but that the debate was, was somehow healthy. Now, the, the European debate that UKIP are, are 
uh, sort of fielding is perhaps less, less healthy, but just as important. How do you think that, that, that their presence can be sort of turned to the advantage of Europe, you know, with, without, without a strong and vocal challenge? Um, there's perhaps less room to improve and move forward in the future. Is it a question of us to President Fogelin or to both our speakers? Anybody. That's fine, that's fine. My, my, role, my role is mine, I think. Your name, sir? Cal. So, I think that the, thank you so much, I think that the policy of UKIP is the wrong one for Britain and for Europe. They are very English. And, and uh, Farage, the leader of this uh, party, is a member of the European Parliament. I saw him in the European Parliament, how he argued. And he is producing, I would not go so far to say hatred, but it goes into that direction. He once made a statement about the physiology, the outlooking of the President of the European Council. Hermann van Rompuy, who is a great politician, a great personality. He even is a poet, he, he writes poems. But he is not a person to go for beauty uh, championship. And Mr. Ferrich made a statement concerning the outlooking uh, of Hermann van Rompuy. This is racist. And, and the whole policy of, of uh, this UK is nationalism. They are against the Scottish. They are just English, not British, they are just English. And so they would split up even the United Kingdom. And although I'm happy, like you, with the outcome, not happy is exaggerated, but I welcome the outcome of this referendum because I want to see a United Kingdom in the European Union. But the Scottish are not nationalists. They have a national orientation as far as Scotland is concerned, but their thinking as far as Europe is concerned is very European. And, and, of course, in the history, there was all, always a competition between Scotland and England, and the Scottish always had their allies on the continent. That's why, historically, and still today, they are quite European. But I would like to see the United Kingdom uh, together and not splitting it up, because if, if finally we would have Scotland in the European Union as a member, Catalonia in the European Union as a member, and many other regions, then it becomes too complicated with the European institution. So I think the nations like the United Kingdom and others should give regions uh, their own, not autonomy in the sense to be independent, but to give them their own rights. And this applies, of course, for the Russians in Ukraine as well. My advice to the Ukrainian government would be give the Russians in Ukraine some rights that they can live their cultural background, but in the framework of the Ukrainian nation. This belongs to our values. And, and here in Romania, you have the minorities uh, of, the, of the Hungarians, of the Germans, and I think this is whether one would have voted for, for Klaus Johannes or not. I, but I think it's a great development that in this country, it's possible that a person who belongs to an ethnic minority and to a religious minority. He, he has two, he, in two ways he belongs to a minority, an ethnic one with German background, and he is a Protestant. So that your country allows somebody to become president of your country as, as belonging to a minority group. I think this is, is a great wisdom of your country that you, you make this possible, and as I think so, you are an example for the, the other Europeans. So this is, this is a sort of, a, of an answer. I don't know whether I fully met your point, but I think a little bit into the direction. We, Romanians, claim that we are a liberal country, but some people say that, um, I don't know, um, that Romania doesn't have an identity and that uh, it is being manipulated by greater powers like the European Union. I'd like to know your opinion. I'm not eager to believe this, so I'd like to hear what you think. Right, right. I'm sorry, Dr. Bodega. Right to this, which is your opinion? Uh, I said that I'm not eager to believe it, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> so you are not sure, or you do have an answer 
you are too shy about it to openly I share actually, with us. I'd like to keep my answer for myself for now. <laughs> okay, I think the European Union is not manipulating any country. And the European Union is not the body in itself. In the European Union, you have many different institutions. I am a Roman Catholic and I have seen the Roman Catholic Church in Rome very often criticizing the European Union as such. And then I said to the cardinals in Rome, you have to distinguish. There is a European Commission, there are 28 European governments, they are in the European Council, then there is a European Parliament, and in the European Parliament you have the EPP, the European People's Party, you have the Socialists, you have the Liberals, you have the Greens. So please identify the institution and the people whom you want to criticize. And one cannot only say the European Union. You would not say in Romania, uh, if you want to criticize the president or if you want to criticize the prime minister, you would want to say I criticize Romania. You criticize an institution or a person. And so I think one has to identify in the European Union the body with whom you agree or with whom you disagree. And when you say manipulate, I think you, you might think of the... Uh, I'm not sure whether you thought into that direction when, when the European Union or the Commission and the Parliament interfered. Uh, the dispute between President Bazescu and Prime Minister Ponta and all what, what was going around that. We have a legal system in the European Union. And I remember quite well in 2000 when there was a new government in Austria. The then Chancellor Wolfgang Schüssel, who is belonging to EPP, made a government with FPÖ, a right wing party. And many people thought that the European values would be in danger in Austria. So this was a legitimate consideration. I had my personal opinion, but this is not of importance now. So, and then as a result of the development in Austria, there came a new article in the Treaty of Nice. I think it was the Treaty of Nice. Uh, and this article described if the democracy in one country is in danger, or if the European institutions think that the democracy, the legal order in one country of the European Union is in danger, then there is a concrete procedure what the European institutions do. So you have with, I think with, the, I don't know the exact legal situation, but with the majority of the member states you can, 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 can say uh, the legal order is not uh, not in order and you need the support of the European Parliament to say the legal order, the democratic order of a country is in danger. So we have a procedure for this. And I think this is very important. One could call this manipulation, but I think it's for the good of a country, if the democracy in a country is in danger, that the other Europeans say, we don't agree to the development in your country. So it would help us. If the, democracy would be in danger in Germany, I would be thankful if the other Europeans tell us it is in, in, in danger. So this is not a manipulation, it's, 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 it's a help, it's, it's uh, supportive, I, I think. And we are living, and this is a question of, of our values, we are living in a democracy and, and not only in our nation, nation states, but in the democracy of the European Union as well. And that's why I'm so happy that the European Parliament now is really a powerful parliament. We have the advantage. Your generation has the advantage. You are the generation of the 21st century. That we in the European Union are based on our values. And this is not something theoretical. The legal order and justice, <coughs> with all its, def all its deficits, which are certainly always there, as long as human beings are on this earth, there will be mistakes and deficits. But the main point of the European Union is, the European Union is based on legal order. That means the law has the power 
that it's not the power that makes law. And so we are based in the European Union with our values on this legal system. And if we have different opinions, we solve them peacefully and not by violence. And so the legal order guarantees, together with democracy, peace. And I think this is a great, great value and all generations should defend it. Thank you very much.